Last time our entertainment reporter, Steve Kometko, spoke with her, she was Cher the actress. This time Steve spoke with Cher the singer, and he joins us now this morning live from Hollywood. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Harry. That was about six months we talked with Cher for Mermaids. Now we talk with Cher the singer, who has a new album due out next week. The album is called Love Hurts, and our visit begins behind the scenes on a video shoot. She seems at ease in front of the cameras, filming a video for her new album. For Cher, the scary part was getting back into a recording studio after a two-year layoff. Why did you go back into the studio? I understand that's a place that you're not particularly fond of or don't feel real comfortable in. I don't feel real talented there. It's a very difficult place. I'm not a good singer, you know? It's like I know what I'd like to do. With my, with my acting, I don't feel like I have any boundaries. I can usually do, I can achieve what it is that I, I want. There's no, I have no limitations as far as my acting in my mind. But when I go to sing, there are definite limitations and they're there always staring me in the face, you know? I'm not Whitney Houston. I mean, like, I would want to go for notes that I don't have. And so it's always been a really difficult place because you want to fly and sometimes you just can't. But on the other hand, you must be able to look back at your musical resume and say, I was an awful singer. I was an awful singer in the 60s. I mean, my heart, that's the one great thing about rock and roll. You don't have to actually be a good singer. You just have to feel it, you know? You have to feel, you have to feel the feeling and be able to make other people feel it. You don't have to actually, you know, Bob Dylan was a perfect example of someone with no voice that, you know, I mean, he was a great writer, but he also conveyed his songs better than anyone else did, except possibly me. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Let's talk about this album, Love Hurts, it's called. Are you singing from personal experience? Absolutely. I kind of think of myself as the modern day, you know, in Rumpelstiltskin when the girl spun gold into... Rumpelstiltskin or, or spun her right. hair into gold or no, something no, no. like that. In Rumpelstiltskin, the farmer's daughter or whatever spun straw into gold. That's it. Right. I have a different concept, but I, I'm hoping to spin tears into platinum. <laughs> That would be nice. Yes. I dedicated this album to every man that ever made me cry. There's not that many, but, you know, there's a few. A list. Yeah. Do you ever feel as though you are the grand dame of the pop music scene? No, I feel like I'm real old, but I don't feel like I'm the grand dame. <laughs> Good. You don't look like the grand dame. What is this outfit? I think this is very interesting. Thank you. Can you tell me a little about it? It's a pair of pants and a shirt. <laughs> Just basic black. Yeah. <laughs> Who designed it? Well. My friend Richard of Chrome Hearts made this, and this is made by um, Chantal Tomas, and this is made by Vivian Westwood, and I don't know who made this shirt. How do you stay in such great shape? You're still working out regularly, aren't you? Yes. All the time? Yes. Isn't it a pain? Yes. <laughs> Why do you do it? Because I'm going to be 45, and the alternative is just, it doesn't, it just is not appealing. 45? That's much younger than it used to be. It's Does not it in my book. Do you know? no. If someone says to me someone's 45, I think, oh, an older person. Still? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know any people as old as me. There must be a few. Anyone in this room? No, huh? <laughs> I guess you win, hands down. <laughs> they need to run away. If they were like me, they'd run away. And if they were like everybody else, they'd get... Is there a, is there a microphone on this? <laughs> well, then I can't tell you what you get. <laughs> There's always been a microphone on in Cher's life, and with that microphone still on, we'll hear more from Cher tomorrow on why she doesn't like Madonna, how she feels about a Sonny and Cher reunion, and what advice she had for her daughter, Chastity, who's about to record her very first album. Harry? I can imagine about the Sonny and Cher reunion. Uh, we're talking about Cher, the actress, Cher, the singer. She uh, let you know anything else she would aspire to be? 
She's done a number of things in her career. She keeps reinventing herself over the years, 27 years to be exact. She would like to play the Phantom on stage in the Phantom of Opera, uh, Phantom of the Opera. She thinks it would be a far more interesting production with a female lead. She thinks she can convey the Phantom's uh, pain and sexual frustration, although she hasn't talked with it with anybody yet. I have a feeling if she set her mind to it, she could do it, and it would be very interesting indeed. We will look forward to part two tomorrow. Steve, thanks so much. Good to see you sure. this morning. Five minutes before the hour. Morning, Kevin Costner and former president Jimmy Carter. Being a pop star like Cher may not be easy. Living under a microscope, being told for years that she had no talent. No, it may not always be easy, but as our entertainment reporter Steve Kameko finds out in part two of his visit with Cher, it's always interesting. This is the Chaplin stage, and it's the actual site in Hollywood where Charlie Chaplin made some of his great films in the 20s and 30s. But this is the 90s, and I'm here to make my new video, Love and Understanding, from my new album, Love Her. The stars. latest album due out next week and a concert tour scheduled for this fall, Cher has been a fixture on and an observer of the pop music scene for more than a quarter of a century now. She hasn't been around that long without forming opinions about herself and others. What do you see in here uh, musically today that you like? Ooh, I like Whitney Houston, I like Paul Young, I love Eric Clapton, you know, there's lots of stuff that I, that I like. What about Madonna? What about her? In some ways, she reminds me professionally, career-wise, she's somebody who speaks her mind. Yeah. She's somebody who's gone against the grain, uh, things that you have done. There are lots of things that I respect about her. I think that she knows how to work the business like nobody I've ever seen before. And... There's something about her that I don't like. She's mean. And I, I don't like that. I mean, I remember having her over to my house a couple of times because Sean and I were friends. And she just was so rude to everybody. It seems to me that she's got so much that she doesn't have to act the way that she acts like a, a spoiled brat all the time. And it seems to me when you reach the kind of acclaim that she's reached and can do whatever you want to do, you should be a little bit more magnanimous and a little bit less of a Don't mince words. No. Babe. <laughs> I got you, babe. I read a quote from Sonny this week, something to the effect, if she'd agreed to, I'd drop everything and go back on the road with a share. What's your reaction to that? I think it's sweet, but that share no longer exists. Can you look back from an objective standpoint and assess that share? It's just something you don't want to go back to? I really don't. I was really, really unhappy. I was just really unhappy. Is this the best point in your life so far? No, the best point in my life was when I turned 40 in the two years that followed that. If you could, would you go back five years or three years? Yes. Why was that so good? It just, everything was perfect. My life was just perfect. You... My kids were still little enough. They were living at home. You could tell them what to do. No, but I, I like to have my kids, I like to have my kids living at home. I don't like it now that they don't live at home, that they're growing up, you know? I had a fabulous boyfriend that I was really happy with. Um, I was doing lots of work that I really, really liked, and I don't know, it was just, it was like my work and my love life and my family life, it was, it, it was, it, for the first time it all worked at one time. On the subject of children, I understand Chastity is about to cut an album. Yes. What advice have you given her? Chill. <laughs> On Mother's Day she came over and she was, had, I said, you know what, you've been in this business five minutes, chill. How is it that you've had a career that's gone? 27 years. Thank you. And there's been so many naysayers. They seem to come in waves, generation after generation. Right. Wouldn't they learn by now? 
I don't know. Well, they weren't around for the 10 or 15 years before they think they're the first people to come up with the realization that I'm not talented enough to be here. You weren't supposed to have a singing career. You weren't supposed to have a successful television show. You weren't supposed to be an actress. Yeah. I wasn't supposed to be able to have a successful road show. I kind of, you know. You have the last laugh? Yeah. You liked it that way? Yeah. Cher's had the last laugh many times during her career. She'll forge on, as will her naysayers. But as she herself asks in a song off her new album, who are you going to believe? Reporting from Hollywood, Steve Kometko, CBS This Morning. Eight minutes before the hour. We'll be right back. It was a surprise attack, a war of words out of the blue. Ageless superstar Cher called Madonna a name on national TV, a name they had to bleep. Don't blame Doug Bruckner for this one. It started out as a typical morning for Madonna and her associates. Just another business meeting. Everybody just Act stuck. Like a spoiled she is on. It seems to me she could be a little bit more magnanimous and a little bit less of a. <gasps> That's right. Cher went out and did it again. Stole the spotlight from Madonna by mocking her on national TV. This time it was on that CBS morning show. There seems to be some kind of competition to hold the title of America's shock pop music queen. Cher and Madonna have been going neck and neck on who could make the most controversial statements and who could make more rude gestures in a video. She could be a little bit more magnanimous and a little bit less of a That's right, Cher called Madonna up on national TV, no less. Now, we're not exactly sure what word Cher used to describe Madonna. Only the virgin ears of that CBS morning show got it firsthand. But we have our own ideas, and so do the people. I think she probably called her a slut. Wild. Twisted. Probably a bitch. Disgusting. Risque. No, oh, I was... I think she called her a Oh, my God, you're on television. This time, Cher may have gone too far. Now, we're not allowed to show you the CBS footage, but we have the next best thing. There are a lot of things about her that I respect. I think she knows how to work the business like nobody I've ever seen before. There's also something that I don't like about her. She's mean. And she acts like a spoiled brat sometimes. It seems to me that once you've reached that kind of acclaim like she's reached, and she can do anything she wants to do, that she could be a little bit more magnanimous and a little bit less of a Your imaginations can run wild. We may never know what word Cher used to describe Madonna, but if we could turn back the hands of time, I wonder how Madonna would have handled this. She could be a little bit more magnanimous and a little bit less of a you know, you gotta figure that pointy little outfit could be a real dangerous weapon in a fight like that. When we come back, an exclusive interview with the pretty exotic dancer who some say broke Julia Roberts' heart.